Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Carolyn Talks for Serious What Happened podcast. I'm your host, Carolyn Hines, and this is the podcast slash YouTube channel where I talk to film creatives about their work and the industry. And today I am joined by director Bianca Pelotti to talk about her short film, Radical Honesty, which will be premiering at the 2022 South by Southwest Film Festival. Um, so, Bianca, can you just talk a bit about yourself and how you got involved with filmmaking? Yeah. Um, hey, guys, I'm Bianca. Um, and I'm a commercial music video and narrative director. Um, I've been filmmaking for quite a while now. And for this specific film, uh, it was it was sent to me um, from Alison Goldfarb, who's the writer and lead actress in it, and who I worked with on a music video prior to this. Um, and I just, I love the script when she sent it to me. I loved the subtle humor that, you know, um, that it tackles. I love the the characters, the the current kind of modern conversation that they're having and and all the things that we, you know, played with um, within that that world. So yeah. I was on mute. <laughs> so this <laughs> is interesting because it has this midnight mid 1970s to late 1970s um, aesthetic, yeah. everything from the music to the costuming and the lighting and the set, it makes you think yeah. that this is a film set like <laughs> in the 70s. Like I could hear the mamas yeah. and the papas practically playing, yeah. the background, right? I love that. And yeah. the dialogue does kind of give you that feel too, because it's talking about you know um, about feminism and about um, yeah relationships. And it was a lot. This was a lot of talk that would have been happening in the late 60s going forward, especially you know when we talk about. Um, radicalism and how women became radical through feminism yeah. and like burning bras and that kind of stuff but then yeah. to really let you know that it's like present day like jack the character um he pulls out a cell phone he's like oh let me text my girlfriend you're like wait a minute <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're like where are that. we i think it was such a, it, it threw me off a bit but i think it was so interesting because like the dialogue is so is very old but yet still so modern because this is stuff we see people talking about a lot totally. especially a lot about a lot on social media totally yeah i i love that um and we really wanted to i wanted to work with the ju juxtaposition of the modern and um and the old you know and and like you're saying like what i wanted to play with was that's why we picked that specific diner um this kind of old school mentality and and music and uh costuming and um texture and the way it's shot and lit with this kind of modern couple or you know people meeting and modern conversation and, and kind of mixing those two worlds and and focusing in on that um but yeah mm, yeah and so because you have that um can you just talk a bit about your own ideas and like your own reaction to the script because as i said this is something that yeah. we talk a bit about especially uh, especially about the whole concept of radical honesty you know you're like <laughs> i want people yeah. to be honest but then it's like you're bordering but then how honest yeah like, exactly like there's honesty yeah. and then there you just be rude now <laughs> yes totally and yeah 100 percent. that is obviously the the main thing that i loved about it so much and and again the the awkward humor between the two of them that that happens and um and just this generation as far as just being completely themselves whether you like it or not you know like with john taking the phone call from his girlfriend and not leaving the booth and her just sitting there you know he's completely himself and i feel like that is maybe more of a modern thing that happens than would have happened you know um a while ago and um and yeah I, I i just i loved how current it was and and thematically i i do always love stories about humans and relationships and and time and um you know it's i think it's the most relatable thing because that's what we all experience in our lives so, you know whether it's friendship or romantic relationships or anything um that's just always been really fascinating to me and you know. right and so this with regards to the conversation of radical honesty so yeah. it kind of shows that how people who as especially a lot of people who expose to have this 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 um idea of living you know like i live my life completely honest and i want to be yeah <laughs> but then it's like he does this thing when he's talking to his girlfriend on the phone because he's talking about having a relationship with her and right. you realize that he really doesn't understand what the concept of radical honesty is because he 100%. lies. 100%. Yes. Right? He lies yes. And that's and, and it kind exactly. Of like, and it kind of shows you like people have their own, they skew their own perception of honesty when it suits them and suits their own purposes. 
100% exactly and and as you like clearly see like she's not agreeing to it she's not open to it but he's like okay great it's happening cool you know you you're open to this um and it's really just about himself and what he wants uh from that situation and even you know having the moment with like the chapstick as he's prepping and he's telling her the rules you know to Allison it's very transactional and I think that that also kind of plays um on technology and this generation you know, um, finding people through an app and and how sometimes that can feel um, very not warm and connected, you know, it can feel transactional as as far as like connecting goes. Mm. Um, so so that's something I found interesting also in the writing. Right. And spe- and using the term transactional is interesting because when we I think we've looked, we've begun to look at relationships as this thing where like I have to get something for me in order to give to you. And in this totally. situation, and, and sometimes we even do it where we don't even feel fully comfortable. And I think yeah. our Rachel, who's played by Alison Goldfarb, who is also the writer, she does this thing where yeah. you can tell that she doesn't really believe everything yeah. that Jack is saying. And she's only saying these things to see yeah. what he's going to say. Like she's feeling him out. And I think that's interesting because I think women do that a lot in conversations, yes. especially with men. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, I loved that and found that fascinating too. Until she, and this also I think we do as women, until she kind of hits her limit of like, okay, you know, I'm done being like pleasant and just kind of agreeing with what you're saying and trying to to tell myself that it's okay, like I'm actually not okay with this. And so I'm just gonna leave, mm-hmm. um, which I, I think that is definitely something that we do as as women. Sure. Yeah, and what do, do you think that is? Because like for me, sometimes I think is that we believe, especially if you're progressive women and we're living in like 20, yeah. for instance, we believe yeah. that we're that, especially if we claim to be feminist, that we have to be like fully progressive. And that means like just yeah, going with the flow that everything's like everyone's so like for an open relationship. We're like, I'm a feminist in 2022. So therefore, an totally. open relationship sh- is the idea of progressive. And that's what being progressive means. But like, yeah. um, with Rachel you're getting the sense that she's like I don't really fully buy in to the concept of an open relationship especially for the way that he and Jack and his girlfriend are doing it 100% yeah I think it's I totally agree with you and I, I think that we try yeah we try to keep our minds as open as possible and we're like oh we you know we're open to everything and but it's it's the way that he goes about it obviously and it's his own way of like how he's doing open relationships that it doesn't match up with kind of what she had in her mind or, um, you know, what she was agreeing to from the beginning, you know? Mm. Um, yeah. And, and during filming is, did you, um, and did you and Allison and, and the crew have any discussions about what was happening on screen? Like while you were talking and while you were prepping and while you were filming, you were saying you had your own discussions about what the script was and what the story was. Yeah, you know, we had a lot of those conversations, Alice and I, um, at the beginning of, you know, before we started shooting and prepping for the shoot, um, just kind of where she was coming from and, uh, and, and what the mindset was of her character and his character and how that should feel and look. Um, And on the day, we really stuck to the script for the most part, you know, except I, when, when she first gave it to me, you know, they weren't in a diner and there wasn't a waitress and it was just kind of a tail end of a date of two people together. Um, so we added that in, but, um, and some little improv moments for humor, like when the waitress drinks um, the drink at the top of, of the film and um, and when Jack puts on the chapstick that was added, but everything else, we we just kind of stuck to to how it was written. And in the moment, we, we kind of just went with what felt truthful and um, yeah, it kind of just flowed like that you mentioned an app earlier so it didn't even occur to me that they had met using an app but yeah no that makes perfect sense because working with apps is has become I think so much a part of our daily lives whether it is a dating app or twitter social media or whatever like technology has become so ingrained in our own relationship in our own interpersonal relationships that we can't to get away from that and while it is convenient it does prove to be challenging especially with regards to like dating especially for women because like yeah. people can say whatever they want on social media totally. and like, you can't really prove anything right. and you have to take them out for at, uh, face value and then when you do meet them you're in like in her position you're just like wow yeah. so this is a yeah. 
bad situation. This is just bad <laughs> all around. Right. Right. And in the beginning, I think she has those things like we're talking about, you know, she's like interested. It's everything that she basically his vibe is what she liked, let's say, from the app, you know, was like that he is open minded and artistic and all these things. Um, but yeah, when when they dig into it, she realizes not so much. <laughs> yeah, you're like, it's not for her. You're like dating is whew, it's, it's a challenge. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's tough. And um, I think and I think in the film also shows that even for people in established relationships, it's even harder, right? Because like, yes, about, like, totally. him, like him lying to his girlfriend. And then even yeah. like, she like he talks about her having two hookups before and she her not pre- <laughs> and it just made me think like could could it be because she she knows that you are not necessarily the best person to hook up with so she's not giving you permission (laughs) yeah 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 I feel that (laughs) I definitely think that was a bit of the thought process yeah Yeah, she was like you know what Mm, yeah (laughs) save her the grief until you know and then he's just like yes I can't go but you you can't come with me so I'm just like that's what kind of open relationship is that um yeah 100 but he also seems unfazed which I loved you know at the end he's kind of like she leaves and and he's just like okay well it's kind of like you know another person to him really yeah and like, yeah. Well, if you were to give this film another name what would you give it what what title would you give it? and I asked this because like to me the, the the word radical honesty is very specific the term radical honesty is very specific to this but I yeah. I, I I was thinking this could also be called the trials and tribulations Apology. I love that. Yes. <laughs> I'm just going to borrow that. Um, I was like trying to think of an app name or something that would be interesting. But no, I, I love that. I think that's great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Perfect. It's, it's challenging. Yeah. I felt for her. I'm just like, girl, you get up and leave. I know. Is not I, know. I know. She stayed so long too, which I love. You know, it's like you can feel with her body language as you're watching her, um, how she wants to leave. Like she tries almost a couple times. Her body language changes like she she faces the window at one point you know as he when he's trying to get closer to her and and you can just see the difference between the close-ups of her moving towards him and being really interested in what he's saying versus wanting to leave a couple times and yeah I, mm. I felt for her too <laughs> yes and you you mentioned time just now and I know we're gonna have to wrap I know Matt's probably gonna send me a message just now but <laughs> one of the things about this film is it's a short film but it's like a super short film it's like only like yeah like roughly five minutes but even in that five minutes it felt long and, and oh, I, I don't think that's yeah. a bad it's not a bad thing to yeah me. It felt like you you like you talked about um like her you can feel her wanting to leave and it's kind of like that like memory situations like you're just yeah. like, making really long yes at your clock is like only a minute has passed <laughs> yeah, that's good yeah I, I I love that actually because I I did want the um the awkwardness to sit with people you know the I wanted people to feel what she was feeling in that situation and so that goes with staying in those close-ups for like a long period of time past the point where you should be moving on to something else where you're just really in it with them so hopefully you felt that yeah, yeah and and one thing I was, so I want to ask you, so what, if you were in her, posi- if you were in her position, when is the moment? Yeah. You got to the, when is, when oh, you that's a great question. <laughs> uh, you know, I feel like it would have been as he was having the phone call. Mm-hmm. I think I probably would have just left. I don't even think I would have waited for him to finish the phone call, but I like that she waited you know, it's just that extra kind of like, okay, let's just see where this goes and what he has to say. And then I'm going to leave. Obviously, I felt like she knew from the phone call, obviously, she was going to leave anyways, you know, she she was ready to go, but I probably would have instinctively left earlier. <laughs> yeah, I probably would have been like, you know, what? I gotta go. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <Just> like- <laughs> Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, this has been so great. Thank you. I know this is like super yeah. short, but still we got a lot in. Thank you so much for yeah. taking the time to talk with me, Bianca, because I know Thank you're busy. You. And South Thank by you. Southwest is gonna be uh, like fast. I always have to give like kudos to like um creatives and talent who attend film festivals because it is not easy. It's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> also have fun with it too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching and having such amazing questions. And yeah, it was great chatting with you. Thank you. You too. <laughs>